Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, we are in the month of December. Praise God. Happy New Month. This is the first time I'm sharing with you in this month of December. Praise God. Now, God has set a great plan for you for this month. The Spirit of God is working out restoration in your life in this month of December. Now, that's what I heard the Spirit of God tell me. That I should share with you that He is bringing forth restoration this month. This month. Before this year comes to an end, there are lots of happenings that are going to take place in your life that will produce a restoration. Because there are things God will have to close up in your life for this year concerning His Word and, and the prophecy that He has given concerning you. And that's why you must be attentive. You must be watchful in prayers. You know, Jesus kept saying, watch and pray. You must be watchful in prayers and you must have great expectations this month. Be watchful how? Pray according to the watches. I've told you this before. Be smart in your prayers. Take out time when you want to pray. Connect your prayer times to the watches and every watch you should be filled with great expectations. Because we've seen that in scriptures that most events that took place in the Bible took place at the opening of the watch. Most events, supernatural events that took place, took place at the opening of the watch. So we we'll say be watchful. That's what we're referring to. Praise God. Now before we go into this broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. And I receive restoration in this month of December. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now then, turn your Bibles with me to... Where do I start from now? The Lord laid it in my heart to share with you concerning tithes and offerings. Now, hold on, hold on. I know many, most times when people hear things like this, they are like, oh, eh, they, they, they want to get our money. They, they, no, this is so important. The Lord began to stay in my heart, stay in my heart to share this with you. And I'll tell you what, you know, last month we were talking about this sign shall follow them that believe and, and what Jesus said about the believer. And when we were dealing, now when, when the Lord was dealing with me about what Jesus said, about they shall take up serpents, you know how for long we have thought he meant he will pick up snakes. But the Lord began to deal with me, he said this is one aspect that the church have left unattended to and it's been causing great havoc now unattended to in terms of knowledge but you see because the spirit of god is the one walking sometimes we do things that we don't even understand what we are doing in terms of knowledge or put a meaning to it or put a teaching clearly to it so by the spirit we find ourselves taking some actions and we're just like, well, I just felt like doing it. And when the Spirit of God comes now and takes us to God's truth and begins to open your mind, your eyes to the scriptures, that, oh, that's what I, I understand this thing very well. Praise God. So the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about this. He said, look, the church haven't been conscious about taking up serpent, like Jesus said. And so the serpent have been doing great havoc in the church and also in the world. The serpent comes for the church. The serpent comes for God's children. The serpent comes for the anointed. And when Jesus talked about serpent, he wasn't talking about snakes, physical snakes. 
he was talking about human beings. So the Lord was began to, while he was teaching me this, he began to impress in my heart, said, you need to teach, take certain subjects and bring forth the truth concerning it with the view of what the serpent has been doing. See that now? So, and that's when the Lord began to talk to me and talk to my people about tithes and offerings. He said, listen, listen. If you don't know the basics, if you don't know the truth behind this, number one, even your giving may just not be right. Some of you have been tithing. You don't even know if God is accepting your tithe. You give offerings. You don't even know if God is accepting your offerings. Or sometimes you don't even know why you give offerings. Yes, I understand, you know, sometimes a, a pastor or a minister can use that as an avenue to, you know, take from the people. But you see, whatever happens at that end is not really the issue. The issue is about you. What is your reason? What is your purpose for doing what you are doing? If you don't understand the purpose, if you don't understand your reason, then you'll be swept away. You'll be cheated. But if you understand what you are doing, nobody will be able to cheat you. Anybody can say what they say, but you know what you do and why you do what you do. So this month, we're going to be focusing on tithe and offering, and I'm going to go in depth. And it's for your sake that the serpent does not beguile. That's what the serpent is doing. Jesus said, we shall take up serpents. And if we don't know this, the serpent will do great havoc in your life. You see, let me give you an example of what the Lord gave me. You remember Abraham. God told Abraham, you're going to have a son. And Abraham believed God. He believed God. Something happened. One morning, after sharing with Abraham, she came up with this idea. After sharing with Sarah and his wife, he, she came up with this idea. Oh, why don't I give Hagar to you? She can have children for me, and those children will be them to me. Abraham didn't protest. He bought the idea. And that was what produced Ishmael. But you see, Ishmael was not what God wanted. But guess what happened? The serpent showed up and Ishmael was born. Are you saying Sarah is the serpent? No. Understand it. The serpent produces something, ideas, and you know, Jesus said we shall cast out devils right now, devils oppose you, the serpent doesn't oppose you, the serpent comes to join with you, but then the purpose is to take you away from God's will, that's why the serpent is dangerous, the serpent doesn't oppose you, the serpent joins with you, to take you out of God's will. So the serpent acts like your friend. The serpent acts like your friend. Oh, I'm with you on this. Then the serpent says, why don't you do this? Mm. Mm. Never thought about that. Ha! Shortcuts. Ha. We're going to be learning a lot this month because there are lots of people who have gone forth and teaching teachings that are sincerely baseless. When I mean baseless, I mean baseless. You know, just like the Bible says, they are puffed up with their own fleshly minds. One of the greatest mistakes you make as a teacher of God's word is to teach based on people's opinion. You'll be making a big mistake. Whenever you hear people's opinion going against something, 
Yes, it will stir up something in you, but what should it stir up in you? The heart to seek the Lord. So you go back in and begin to seek the Lord from silence. Don't look at public opinion and say, oh, ah, this thing we have been doing is true. We have to look at it again. Ah, actually, actually. The biggest error people make is when they say Titan is not recorded in the New Testament. That's a big error and a big blunder. When they say things like that, they say, I ask a question. So when did the New Testament start? Oh, the New Testament started after the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, so Titan is not recorded. Yeah. So has the New Testament church stopped? Mm, no. But there are many churches that tithe, pay tithes today. So how do you say tithe is not recorded? Oh, no, no, no. You see, the, the, the Bible, in the Bible, okay. Now, same question. Has the New Testament church start, stopped? And no, it hasn't stopped. So it's still continuing. Yeah. Is it even possible? That there are revelations not recorded in the Bible section, the writings of the New Testament, that God is still unveiling till this day. Uh, anything that is not in the Word, you cannot say Titan is not in the Word. You can never say, you know, I always put up this challenge. Anyone who can boldly come up and say, God taught him that Titan is wrong. Let that person show. Whenever they talk about it, if you listen hard, you can tell, you can pick out the error. You see, it's easy to say people are using Titan to defraud people. Meanwhile, Titan is not recorded in the New Testament. Now, People are like, yeah, actually, actually, actually. But you see, I'll tell you one truth. If you take out these in truth in, the, in, the life, in your life and the life of God's children, you're going to tamper with the flow of God, not in, only in your life, but also on the earth. I know people say things like, there are unbelievers who don't tight, but yet they are so rich. In fact, all the tithing believers have been tightened. They've not been able to beat. There was never a time God said we should come into competition. You see, you'll be making a big mistake rating the blessing of God to money. You'll be making deep errors. And so you're now thinking, let's compete in terms of cash, in terms of money. Look through the scriptures. There has never been a competition. God is not saying, I will, I will bless you. You have so much money above every unbeliever. No. Rather, the scripture even gives us this idea that the unbeliever is rich because he's keeping the riches for us. God gives to the one who's good in his sight wisdom, knowledge, and joy. He gives to the sinner travail of sorrow to gather and heap up that he will give it to the one who's good in God's sight. Do you believe in that scripture? If you believe in that scripture, then it simply means the unbeliever will have more money. But guess what? He's keeping it in trust by God for the believer who believes in Jesus Christ. That is his part of the labor. His part of the labor is to gather and heap up. So never be envious of people that are rich, unbelievers that are rich. Never be envious of them. David said, I was envious. I almost got to that point when I considered and saw the prosperity of the wicked until I entered into God's sanctuary. My eyes were open. Ah, then I understood their end. What did he see in the sanctuary of God? He found the scriptures. Then he realized, ah, I know why these people are prospering, even through ungodliness. I know, I can see their end. 
So when people tell you those things, I tell you know, I, I've, I've made this statement before that anyone who tells you Titan is wrong is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Now the Lord modified that talking to me. He said, that's the serpent spirit at work. That's the serpent spirit at work. I, I'm, I'm giving you all this background because from tomorrow we will begin to look into these things. We're going to go into so much in depth. And I'm open. You can ask your questions. You can throw any questions you want to throw. Let's not say what people want to hear. Let's look in this book and through this book find God's word so that you will walk by knowledge trusting the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth praise God so let's look at this scripture Malachi popular scripture that you you know but but I'm going to be starting from verse Malachi chapter 3 now well I'm going to start from verse 7 from verse 6 let me start from verse 6 say for I am the Lord I'm reading from the old King James for I am the Lord I change not now let that sink in your mind God is speaking of himself now this was a prophecy Malachi was prophesied in God's name see that now see, so, so I am the Lord I change not I don't change Put that at the back of your mind. We'll revisit this. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinance. Take that as another point. My ordinance. My ordinance. My ordinance. It says, from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say wherein shall we return God says you're doing something wrong and from the days of your father you have not keeping my ordinance I've been quiet about it but now I'm telling you return to me so that I will return to you and then he say okay so how do we return now you see how this discussion is going then Remember, say, how do we return? He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? Remember, he was preaching to them. And then God was preaching to them. And God says, hey, return to me. Then I'll return to you. And he said, how do we return to you? Tell us what we should do. He said, will a man rob God? But you've robbed me. And I, okay, how did we rob you? I said, this is how you robbed me. In tithes and offerings. Notice he didn't just say in tithes. He said in tithes and offerings. Okay. He <laughs> says, you got to return to me. How do we return to you? You've been robbing me in tithes and offerings. Wow. Take note. He didn't say tithes alone. He said tithes and offerings. Now let me read this to give a background. Say, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, people look at this to think God is saying, I have cursed you because you have robbed me. God didn't say, I have cursed you. God didn't say, I will curse you. God says, you are cursed with a curse. There's a big difference. Big difference. He says, you are cursed. Now, remember, he says, from the days of your fathers, you've been doing this thing. And now he says, you are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me. Then he says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here, we say the Lord of all, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So God says, you are cursed. 
Then he gave a solution. Now bring all the tithes. And he says, prove me and see if I'm not going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Now when God spoke like this, it's left for the people to believe and said, okay, we don't think we're cursed. You remember Jesus had a conversation with the Pharisees, the Jews some one time. And then he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And they began to argue. We have never been in bondage. You see that now? You know, we have never been in bondage. Why should you say we will be made free? Same thing here. God is saying you are cursed. They can say, ah, I don't think we are cursed. Though. It's just a normal economic hardship. God said, okay, prove me by doing what is right. You see, the earth, the world is where it is today because of this same thing. There is a cause of working. My time is up, but I'm laying the foundation for this. And as we begin to go in, you would, I pray the Holy Spirit will open your understanding and with this truth, change the cause of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.